and whom your Redeemer is. All I tell you is meet me at Galilee. Galilee Missionary Baptist Church, and good morning to our Sunday morning 1115 virtual worship service, where our senior pastor is the Reverend Fitchu Lee Lyon, Jr. For all of those that are tuning in and visiting with us today, we just love to have you, and we're thankful for you. We pray that this experience will be a new and refreshing experience, and you will look at God in a whole new way after today. For all of you Galileans, thank God for another day for us to worship one to another virtually as we go through this wonderful, wonderful day of worship this Sunday morning. God bless you. Here at Galilee is our mission and purpose through consecrated fellowship to evangelize to a lost world. Maintain God's house as a sacred place of worship and to educate all members to do all things in conformity with the Holy Bible and spiritual harmony of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We walk with the vision of being committed to raising, training, and empowering the saints of Christ to experience the presence of God through evangelism, stewardship, and community outreach. We're honored to share this day with you, hallelujah, as we worship God's risen Son. We hope that God touches your life as we worship together virtually, and that you leave this worship experience today with the peace of God inside. At this time, we'll have a song of worship from our Galilee Music Ministry, followed by scripture and prayer from our own Reverend Leo Scott. into this house and 
gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into this house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into this house and gathered in his name to worship Christ our Lord worship him Christ our Lord we have come into this house and gathered in his name to worship him we have come into this house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into this house and gathered in his name to worship Christ our Lord. Worship him. Christ our Lord. So forget about yourself and worship in his name and worship him. Just forget about yourself and concentrate on him and worship him. Just Forget about yourself and concentrate on him and worship Christ our Lord. Worship him, Christ our Lord. Just forget about yourself and concentrate on him worship him. Just forget about yourself and concentrate on him and worship him. Just forget about yourself and concentrate on him and worship Christ our Lord. Worship him, give him all the praise, the honor, and the glory. Yes, worship him, Christ our Good morning, church. This morning, scripture will be coming from the book of Acts, the 16th chapter. I'll be reading from the 16th verse over through the 30th verse. And it reads as follows. And it came to pass, as we went to pray, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit, spirit of divination met us which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which showed unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. And when her masters saw that the hope of their gain was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace 
unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrate, saying, These men, being Jews, did exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to, to observe being Romans. The multitude rose up against them, and the magistrate rent their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fasten to the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prison was shaken, and immediately all the doors opened, and every band were loose. And the keeper of the prison, awakened out of his sleep, seeing the prison doors open, he drew his sword, who had killed himself, who would have killed himself, suppose that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thy no harm. For we all are here. And then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sir, what must I do to be saved? May the Lord have a blessing to the readers and hearers and doers of his holy word. Shall we pray? Gracious and eternal Father. We want to thank you, Lord, for once again bringing us into the house of prayer. But we also want to pay for our pastor, Lord, the one who's going to bring the word this morning. Pray for him and his wife and son. And pray for our pastor emeritus, Dr. Lyons Sr. and his wife. But dear Lord, we also want to pray for our Galilee family, where we all join together with one band of Christian love. One can't fall without the other. Being united together here at Galilee. Dear precious Father, we ask for your continued blessing and your anointing to be upon us. Asking for you to go into the nursing homes and in the hospitals, Lord, and bless everyone and let them know that you God and you God all by yourself. We know you God. We know you can do what the men say that's impossible. You can make it possible. We know that you can heal, Lord. You can make the blind to see, the lame to walk. You that God, Lord, that that healed the withered hand of the man. But dear precious Father, we ask you to go inside our hearts and circumcise our heart, Lord. Let us be the great joy and be a part of you as we go forward this morning in your holy and precious word, doing your will. Bless us and keep us, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God for this fourth Sunday of February. Praise God. Happy birthday to all those that are born in this month of February. Hallelujah. A lot of special people in this month. My pastor will be the first one to say that. We pray that your special day be filled with all the glory and wonder of God's unfailing love. And you may feel his presence working on your life all throughout the year. Happy birthday to Pastor Fitz today. Amen. Please check your Facebook page and all the options that are available. If you want to send him a loving gift, he really would appreciate it. And God bless you. We want to take this time of the month to once again be reminded of some of our past pioneers of our race as we observe Black History Month. This Sunday, we want to highlight Reverend William Seymour, All right. May 2nd, 1870 to September 28th, 1922. Seymour is synonymous with the Azusa Street Revival in Los Angeles. All right. 
where God used him mightily to bring about what we know as the Pentecostal movement. He was from Louisiana, baptized Catholic, but grew up attending a Baptist church. He received modest training in the holiest tradition, but in Los Angeles, the church leadership rejected Seymour's emphasis on speaking in tongues. He began a Bible study that would become the Azusa Street Revival. It was April 9, 1906, and the Spirit of God fell on the group with fire, tongues, and other signs. Today, most Protestant Pentecostals, which number in the hundreds of millions, trace their lineage to Azusa. God bless Pastor Seymour. As we celebrate Black History this month, let us be reminded of Hebrews, the 12th chapter, verses 1 and 2. Wherefore, seeing we all are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which doeth so easily beset us. And let us run with the patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 As a reminder, we all encourage to participate in our midday prayer this week. Every day at noon, everyone pray for God's healing of our divided nation. Also read each day 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, the 25th through the 27th verse. That's 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, the 25th through the 27th verse. Amen. Amen. Join Pastor Fitz for Wednesday in the Word at 7 p.m. every Wednesday night on our Galilee Facebook. We're studying in the book of Acts. And this week it'll be from chapter 17 and 18. Last week was 16. And he's about to give us a little more insight on chapter 16. And it was also associated with our Sunday school lesson. I think God's trying to talk to us about that, y'all. We need to pay attention. So we look forward to hearing what Pastor Fitz has to say today. Also join us for our Friday fellowship at 7 p.m. We unite in fellowship one to another for about 15 or 20 minutes. Our pastor leads us in a scriptural devotion and prayer. Tune in to that. Last week it was Psalm 121, which was my late father's favorite song, and he worked it, and I needed that. You know, we need a little uplift from our pastor every week, especially at the end. That's it. If, you, if you had a good time, then you want to thank God for getting through the week. But if you have trouble, then you want to thank him for all that he's done. He said, you know, you don't always have to dwell on it, but just look to the hill. We'll come with your help. Your help comes from the Lord, not from the mountains, not from the, vi from the vaccine, but from the Lord. I really appreciate that, Pastor Fitz. You helped me this week. Join us Sunday at 8.30 for Sunday School Reflections. Now, uh, it's, it's such a blessing to get that. And, 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 and I, was, I, was, I was reflecting on the fact that it's such a blessing to get that Sunday School lesson without having to travel right now when it's so dangerous and so treacherous. So tune in in the morning. We have some some some. Some, some spirit-filled folks in our, in our church that are giving those Sunday school lessons. And they're such a blessing. That's where we learn those intricate things in the Word of God that have kept us going right on down the road until our purpose is fulfilled on this side of the mountain. At this time, we'll have another song of worship from our Galilee Music Ministry, followed by a message from our senior pastor. And I will say on his birthday, you better fasten your seatbelt. So you, so you won't fall off during the ride. May God bless each and every one of you.
I don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring. I don't know what the angels will sing. I do not know when the bell's gonna ring, but I know God cares for me. I may be up or I may be down, maybe level to the ground, but that's all right. With him I'm going, I know God cares for me. I know. God cares for me. Amen. Amen. As we prepare ourselves for the word this morning, I invite you again, as you heard earlier, to join me in Acts 16th chapter and beginning. In your reading, you heard 16 through 30 being read. But I'd like to draw your attention to verse 30. That's Acts, the 16th chapter, and verse 30. And that reads, And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? We're on a journey with the subject this morning. Simply, what must I do? What must I do? That's a simple question, but it brings about a magnitude of answers. When we look at the life that we're living today, there are several questions that are being asked. (laughs) I don't think too many are saying, what must I do? I think there's a a lot of questions in regards to uh, when will this pandemic be over? And then as soon as that question's asked, then there's another one that I hear so much, especially from 
minorities, and elderly. Is, is that vaccine safe? And you know, it, 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 it's somewhat, and y'all work with me today because uh, today is my birthday, so I'm, I'm not in a hurry. I'm not in a hurry. Amen. The Lord has been stirring me up all week, and I wasn't here last week, so I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm getting ready. That's all I can say. But the question comes into play is, is this vaccine okay? Now, you know what amazes me? is that we pray for deliverance. And regardless of how fast this thing came, see, I serve a God that don't need time. I serve a God that when he speaks, things happen. So if you was praying for an answer, why are you like the folks when Peter knocked at their door when they was praying for him to get out of prison? Why are you asking and saying, who is it at the door? But then there's another question. That's, well, will these other strands affect us? Will the economy ever go back? All of these different questions that are asked. But this morning, put all of them aside. And the one question I want you to focus on is, what will you do? What will you do? I love this 16th chapter. This 16th chapter, where it finds itself is that Paul and Silas are, 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 are on the journey for the Lord. Uh, now, remember, if you've been following in our Bible study and so forth, you know that Paul and Barnabas was together, and Paul had a problem with John Mark, and then Paul said that John Mark couldn't go, and so John Mark went with Barnabas, they went one way, and Paul took Silas and went the other. And so now we find Paul and Silas in a situation now where there's a demon-possessed young lady that comes into their presence. And the interesting thing about it is she speaks to them being men of God and salvation that they're preaching. Now, when we look at that, uh, that, that that's amazing, and, and it goes to show you that regardless of whatever demon is present, right. God is in control, that's right. All right. even of the demons. And so as they travel throughout, bringing new converts to the new church, this woman was announcing who they were as they went into new areas. But now, interesting thing about it was, is that the masters that owned her were also benefiting because as she was announcing who they were, she was also reading people's futures. And as she was doing that, there was a charge, of course, and the masters of her were making money. So everybody was happy, you would think. And so, finally, Paul, and y'all know Paul. Paul said, uh-uh. He said, demon, come out of this woman. And the demon came out. And when the demon came out, automatically, the masters start losing money because she couldn't tell futures anymore. And so, they got mad, so they grabbed Paul and Silas, and took them to the magistrates and told them that they were out there spreading gossip, causing conflict in the community, and the magistrates said, flog them, whoop them, beat them, and they did. Didn't ask them, was this true? 
didn't take him to court and uh, just flogged him and threw him in jail. Now, here we are. Paul, in case you don't know, if you haven't been following in Acts or in the Bible study, and if you haven't been, I suggest you get there on Wednesday. But what's, what, what's, 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 what's interesting is Paul has decided to go this way. He wanted to go to two other places, but yet he had a dream that said to go to Macedonia. But now the interesting thing about it is when they first got there, things were good. This woman was announcing them. Things, people were coming. But then all of a sudden when Paul sto- stood up for the Lord, he got flogged and thrown in prison. How many of you have asked, what should I do? And you felt vision or confirmation through other means that the Lord is directing you to do this and you do it. And at first the sun is shining, but then the rain comes. And when the rain comes down, how many of you sit and say, at that point, not what do I need to do? But you say, Lord, where are you? Lord, why did you let this happen? Did you really tell me this? How many of you get in a position where you begin to doubt, but yet the Lord directed you? You had the vision from the Lord that this is where you're supposed to go. But on the way, the rain came. But the beauty thing about this is, and this is I get happy. Y'all, if you, I haven't even got to the sermon yet. I'm just getting y'all ready where we at. But the beauty of this thing is, it says, after they stood up for what the Lord said, after they got beat to almost the death of themselves, after they got thrown in prison and locked as shackles on their feet, it says at midnight, Paul and Silas got together and said, regardless of how beat we are, regardless of how confined we are, we going to give praise to the master. The thing that I gained so much from that was not the fact trouble won't come, but the fact is when it does come, Jesus is with you. What they were acknowledging was God's presence. They were acknowledging that y'all saw what happened to us. Y'all saw us get beat. Y'all saw us come in here jailers, but we want you to know God is with us. And they praised him at midnight in the heat of their situation. They knew where to look. They knew how to respond to what can I do is lift the name of the Lord is praise him, that's what you can do. You know, it's interesting. When I look at that, that's when things begin to evolve into where I'm going in our sermon message today. Because see, when they were in there, praising him, singing psalm and hymn to him. What they were asking is, Lord, where do we move next? What they were looking at was not their current situation, but the ministry that they had to deliver. Because see, there were other prisoners in the prison. And as they were lifting the name of the Lord, they heard them. And I'm sure they were sitting there in their cells saying, how can they call on a God that would allow them to go through what they went through? But as soon as you say that, then you say, he must be some kind of God that allowed them to go, but yet they still lift him up. They still look up to him. What kind of God is this? 
I ask you a question. How many of your family or friends see that God in your representation? And they don't see, oh, they go to church every Sunday. Oh, they do this. Oh, they read their Bible. But they see the God in the presence of you. And it's not you they see, but it's the God that keeps you. They were so impactful in their praise that an earthquake came. And an earthquake shook the prison, shook the shackles off, opened the doors of the jail cell. And they continued. See, that's what, see, see, where we mess up is when the Lord show up, we show out. See, he's supposed to show out, not us. See, we don't just run and jump. I say that because a vaccine has been given. That don't mean, y'all, that once you get the vaccine, you just go out there and act like you did back in February of 2020. That means God has blessed, but you still need to be cautious of how you act, how you move, and how you go about. They, when the door sails open, when the shackles fell off, they, the jailer felt the earthquake and heard the praise and ran in and thought a few things. And that's what we want to talk about this morning. The things he thought. And it says it in our scripture today. The first thing that he thought about was the reason What was the reason for all of this? What was the reason that they got freed? What was the reason that the earthquake come? What was the reason? Don't understand the reason. And that was triggered by his fear. And the fear he had was when the earthquake came and the jail cells opened, He feared that they were going to be released and gone. And the next day, when the magistrates came back and saw all the prisoners gone, he would be killed. So he's looking at what is the reason that this has happened. I don't see why it should have happened. Not familiar with earthquakes. How many of y'all had some some questions as to what's the reason? Why did I get cancer? I'm healthy. I take care of myself. Why did I lose my job? I'm faithful. I'm on time. I'm there 15 minutes every day. Why? What's the reason? Some of you look at the reason is fear. Some of you are scared in a relationship, scared to commit. Involved with your church family, scared to commit. What's the reason is the question. What's the reason? But you know what? It not only caused him to ask that question because of fear, but it also asked him to cause that because of faith. Because he looked at what was going on and saw that even though an earthquake came and even though the place shook, like it never shook before. They didn't leave. Why? He was experiencing faith. Because, see, he had to believe when they hollered out, don't kill yourself. We're still here. He had to believe that they all were still there. Because, see, if just one of them left, he was going to be in trouble. But he had to look at faith and say, and stop himself because, see, when he heard the shake and went out there and saw the door cells open, his first response was he wanted to kill himself. But they hollered out and said, don't do it. We all are still here. He looked at, at that point, it's a point of faith. See, that's where, interesting enough, We wonder how this man got to the point of saying, what do I need to do to be saved? He had faith before. 
he got saved. He believed. That's what faith. Do you believe? What do you have faith in? He had faith in one thing that he had not come in contact with, and that was the holy power that had done something in this situation. He had faith because nobody had left. So here he is, pondering the reason why. Why is all this happening? I don't understand it. He not only looked at the reason of it, the reason why they didn't flee, the reason why that they stayed, the reason why these gentlemen are still up there praising and, and giving thanks, the reason why, why? He not only said that, but then he had to look at the reply that he got. What was the reply he got? The reply he got from Paul was, we all still here. Paul points out the fact that we all are still here. He's wondering by reason why did this happen and his reply is one of, you know what, and let, me, let me break it down to you this way. The one thing that we have to understand is God's reply is not what you want. See, we tend to think this is the reply. This is what God is going to tell us to do. But see, the problem is you don't seek the reply. You want to tell the one what the reply should be. Amen. See, when, we, when, we, when we're dealing with a reply from, from the Lord, we must have the faith that's not one of experimental things. What do you mean by that, Pastor? That means, take this for instance. I cross a bridge coming to church every Sunday. When I get to that bridge, I don't give a thought, Brother Wyman, of is the bridge going to hold me? Is the bridge going to let me get all the way across? I don't give a thought because I have got to cross that bridge every day. For as long as I can remember. So because of the experience that I've been through, I got the faith. I don't even think about if that bridge is going to hold me. See, there are so many that have the faith based on experience. Well, oh, yeah, I know there's a God. I know he's good. I know he's good. Why? Well, he's been good to my mama. He was good to my uncle. I had a cousin that had cancer, and he, he brought them through. I know, I know it. But do you know it? Not by what you experimentally have seen, but do you know it by a spiritual, intimate connection? All right. All right. See, what this jailer experienced was an intimate connection. Yeah. All right. yeah. See, when you are put in a situation mm -hmm. where, and how do we know it was intimate? He was getting ready to kill himself yes, that's right. That's right. Yeah. because of what he experienced, knowing that the punishment is death if people leave. But he experienced a spiritual connection, oh, yeah. an intimate connection. Yeah. Why is that? That's why he asked, what do I need to be saved? Because his experience yes, didn't help him at this point yeah. because they should have been gone. But when he looked in there and saw they were all there, and even they had the audacity to say, we hear, yeah, yeah. what is this? Yeah. What is this? What is this intimate? What is this? You know what? It's so deep to me. Yeah. I got to know where it is. Yeah. We can't go through our life having an experimental faith of God. Yeah. We got to have an intimate faith. Yeah. You have to know because he said he would. Yeah. If you don't see the answer, you got to know that he's called out to you yeah. and said, I'm still here. Yeah. You have to know yeah. intimately that regardless of what it looks like, right. oh, it's piling up on every end, yeah. but God yeah. is with me. Yeah. You have to know in your reply, you have to look not for what you want, All right. 
but what for God has for you. You have to seek him with an intimacy of faith. Understanding that I might not have the answer, but I know the one that does. He wondered why, the reason this happened. He looked at the reply that he received from them. But then he got a result, y'all, just like all of us got. His result and how beautiful it was. His result led him to salvation. Because it says, I believe in verse 34, and when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God. It led him to salvation because of what he heard, because of what he had received. He saw the result of salvation. He asked the question, what shall I do to to be saved? And Paul said, believe on Jesus Christ, not because your mama did, not because your daddy did, but believe on Jesus Christ because he's the one that brought the earthquake. He's the one that we're singing praises to. He's the one that has saved you from killing yourself. He's the one. And he was led to salvation. The result was he believed in the intimacy of what he was experiencing, and he knew it was God. Not Paul, not Silas, but God. And how do we know that? Because not only was he led to salvation, but it also says he was led to satisfaction. I want to tell y'all, this is the part I love the most. The love of satisfaction. I'm going to tell you, there's nothing no better than Jesus. Money, family, friends, there's nothing that can bring you satisfaction like Jesus. Y'all threw some hearts up on that one. See, when you understand that when you are led to salvation, There comes a satisfaction. You'll be just like this jailer. See, his satisfaction led him to what? I'm glad you asked. It led him to service. See, that's what it will lead you to. See, when you get the satisfaction of Jesus Christ, you are compelled to help somebody else. You can't help but to help somebody else. You will look to help somebody else because of the satisfaction that you, and I ain't talking about if you paralyzed you looking to help somebody if it's just smiling at them you looking he said this jailer took them to his house fed them nursed their wounds service he was glad to give it why is it because he had satisfaction not because they didn't run from jail but because when he accepted Jesus Christ he got fulfilled you know many of us look for so many things in life to bring us satisfaction we look for money to do it we look for fame to do it we look for family or friends but you're looking in the wrong place satisfaction is not getting your degree Satisfaction mm-hmm. is not landing that great, great corporate job. Mm-hmm. Satisfaction mm-hmm. is when you have accepted Jesus Christ yeah. into yeah. your life yeah. and you recognize yeah. that he is your salvation. Yeah. I preached a funeral yesterday of my own sister, old Daniel, her son. Amen. And the one thing I told him is that when you get in your darkest hour look to Jesus he is your satisfaction oh you gonna cry and you gonna hurt but as you do all of those emotional things look to Jesus also because he will comfort you through your tears he will comfort you through your pain 
when we look at the salvation that was brought to this jailer, this man that before, the day before, didn't know nothing about no Lord. But because of what he experienced that night, he came into a real relationship with Jesus. How do I come into that relationship? How do I look to him when I ask what must I do? How do I know what he's telling me when I get an answer? How do I know it's from him? How do I know this is for my good? Those are all valid questions. And I can't give you the answer. But I can point you to the one that can. And see, if you're looking for a megaphone, you might not get that. If you're looking for somebody to walk up to you and tell you, you might not get that. But I'm going to guarantee you this much. If you get into this word of God and you let it speak to your heart, he will speak to you. And you know what? You might not have 100%. I can't tell you how many times I've stepped out, not doubting everything else, but yet I still stepped because I had more faith than I did doubt. Oh, you're going to have doubt. Don't let nobody tell you they're 100% stepping in. No, that ain't true because we human. The only one that could do that was Jesus because he was human and divine. But because of our humanness, we can't step out without doubting. But the point of the matter is, we have an advocate that strengthens and keeps us. So that should override your doubt. Because he says, joy will come in the morning. He says, if you trust in me with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding. The word tells you that, not me, but the word. How, what must I do? Trust the Lord. That's what you need to do. Quit trusting your job. Quit trusting your money. Quit trusting your family. Trust God. This jailer had a response that he wondered about. Had a reply that he answered to. Then he had some results that put him to work. Yeah. I'm telling you this. It's not always going to be the way you think it ought to be. Yeah. You're going to be asked by the Lord to do some stuff that don't make sense. Yeah. You're going to be asked after an earthquake to trust him. Right. I'm going back to, I know I usually give you a story, but I got to give you the word this morning. I had to go back to 1 Kings. Some of y'all already know where I'm going. 17th chapter. The old widow woman. She said to Elijah the prophet. She said, oh, I'm going. Take these couple of sticks. Make me a fire. Some of y'all know what that is. And I'm going to fix this meal. And that's going to be it. Me and my son are going to eat this and then die. She already knew. She thought what the result was. But Elijah the prophet said to her. Now y'all need to go back and read that. Because see, we tend to think he just laid out an eloquent proposition. But what he said to her was, Go ahead, make your case. Go back and read it. He said, go ahead, do what you plan to do. But before you eat that cake, make me one. Now, wait a minute, Elijah. How's she going to have enough for her and the son? But yet now you say, go ahead with those intentions. 
But before you make that one for yourself, yeah. make me one. Yes, sir. He said, make me a little cake. On, he said, you don't got to use all the stuff you got. On, make me a little cake. Hey. 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 But then, yeah. he said, if you do this, yeah. said the Lord will, yeah. not might, yeah. not maybe, yeah. but if you do this, yeah. the Lord will. Fix it so every time yeah. you go to that barrel, yeah. there will be meal for you. Yeah. Well, if you look at the story, you see what happened. Yeah. She didn't say, yeah. you got to be crazy, preacher. She didn't say, how can I give to you before I give to myself? She didn't say none of that. What she did was she believed in what the prophet said to her as she went made the cake and took it to him. Now see, y'all missed that part too. She didn't make him a cake and then try to make hers. She made him a cake and took it to him. Read it, y'all. And when she took it to him, see, faith is about works. See, you got to walk in this thing. See, you just can't believe that if I make a cake for you, it's all right. The Lord is asking you to walk in it. You believe he said it? Walk in it. She took the cake to the prophet. And when she went back, y'all, to get her, the barrel was full because she had the faith to step out. How many of y'all got the faith to step out? Because 2,000 years ago, my Jesus stepped out took on all this evilness for all of our sin. And they hung him on the cross, stretched him wide and high. But on the third day, my Jesus got up. And when he got up, we got up. And for that, we can be thankful. Oh, I thank the Lord. What do I do? Follow you, Lord. What do I do? Provide the service that you require. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you have done. Open the doors for those of you that don't know him today. This is your opportunity to know him. Accept him into your life. Know that how you've been traveling has not been sufficient. You got an earthquake this morning. Now follow him. Just ask him. Lord, I take your son into my life. Be my salvation. And he is. Have you done that? He will be with you with your knowledge every step of the way. Trust him. Lean to him. Pray with me. Father, we thank you for your son. We thank you for all that you continue to do in our lives. Father, guide us through these unparalleled times. Show us continually what your will is. Lead us as you have us to go. It's not about time. It's about you. When we put our hands in your hands, we have not lost time. We've gained everlasting salvation. Thank you, Father, for responding to us and replying to us and giving us the results salvation and satisfaction thank you father pray with our families that have suffered bereavement sister Daniels and her son be with sister Marvestine Johnson's family her granddaughter her sister as we lay her to rest this coming Friday and father be with sister Ruth Brooks family and continue father to guide us and strengthen us through these times 
that we face grief, we face doubt, we face things that we don't understand. But we look to you and lean to you for all of our understanding. We ask this all in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We serve a God that is risen. Jesus Christ is not on the cross anymore. He's sitting next to the Father, offering intercession for each and every one of us. I want to encourage you today. This is giving time. I said it's about service. I said there's a response. When you have satisfaction in the Lord, there's a response, and that response is giving. And this is the time we have, even though we're not open publicly, we still have avenues that God has provided for our giving. We have, for those that are visiting, our visitors that are watching, we have Cash App. You'll see on the screen how you can give to that. God leads you to give to this ministry of Galilee Missionary Baptist Church. Bless you. And the Galilee membership, we have Givelify. Amen. We th I thank you for allowing God to touch you in a special way and giving to our Givelify. And then also, for those of you that religiously, every week, every month, Send your tithes and offering through the mail. God bless you. Thanking God for having you a church home that you can send your gifts to. And those that call and leave word that have a deacon or a trustee pick them up, God bless you. We keep Brother White moving, picking up. God bless you for continually seeing fit to be blessed by God and bless your church. God has been good, and we certainly give him the praise. Let me pray now for those that have given and those that are getting ready to give or giving now. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to give. We thank you for multiplying, Father, the gifts that have and will be given. We thank you, Father, for opening us doors to minister to your people. Thank you, Father, for everything that you have blessed in this ministry of Galilee Missionary Baptist Church. Bless the giver. Thank you for all that you have done. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You know, uh, this is Black History Month, and we have, and Reverend Means has, has beautifully highlighted, spoke about different Black History trailblazers this month. But Galilee, we got a trailblazer here too. Sister Frankie Johnson is one of our trailblazers. And in case you didn't get to see the beautiful recognition that she received this month, I want to read it to you this morning. Sister Frankie Johnson, and she got a whole lot of stuff after her name. She got licenses all over the place. Is an Indiana black trailblazer and social work. She earned her bachelor's degree from Indiana State University and her master's degree in social work from the Indiana University School of Social Work. In 1985, Sister Frankie co-founded and became a charter member of the National Association of Black Social Workers Central Indiana Chapter, later known as the Central Indiana Association of Black Social Workers. From 2006 to 2014, 
Sister Frankie served as chapter co-president of this found organization. She continues to serve on the board as board member emeritus. Sister Johnson, transformational leadership has mobilized critical services to the profession, to the community, and consumers. She has presented numerous in-services and promoted calibrations with a board, broad range of partners. This is the part I want to talk about. Because, see, I know Sister Frankie. Right. See, we're not talking about somebody that's passed on. Yeah. We're talking about somebody, she might have been retired, yeah. but she's still with us. Says she's a former co-chair of the National Health and Wellness Committee, Trauma and Disaster Response Committee, the National Steering Committee representative for the National Association of Black Social Workers, worked as an administrator of the social work for the Marion County Public Health Department until August of 2020, when she retired after 25 years of service, winner of the NIA Award and Indiana Service Award for the NABSW, Social Worker of the Year Award from the NASW, Indiana, a long-term member of the National Association of Social Workers, Indiana chapter, co-author, co-authored a manual on disaster response for the National NABSW and co-presented on psychological first aid and crisis response during disasters at the April 2012 National Conference. But what they don't have down here is Sister Frankie Johnson knows who Jesus is. Sister Frankie Johnson has been walking with Jesus before she got to Indiana University. Sister Frankie Johnson is a tither at Galilee Missionary Baptist Church. Sister Frankie Johnson knows what it means when God touches you and moves you into venues that you never thought about. That's a trailblazer, y'all. We can be proud Galilee Missionary Baptist Church, that we got a trailblazer that's still paving the way as God has given her. God bless you, Sister Frankie. And I thank all of you because God has been good. Oh, I'm happy today. I told y'all, hang on in. I don't know what time we're going to finish today because today is a celebration. Today is my birthday. 56 years old and I'm thankful for all that God has done and is doing. He has blessed me to be the husband of a beautiful woman, to be the husband, the coverer of her. He has blessed me and her to have a son that could be out there doing anything but decides that he wants to not because daddy told him, but because he knows Jesus for himself. He knows what he will do. And I ain't got to tell you what he been through, because that ain't none of your business. But he didn't been through some stuff. And when I say he knows Jesus, I'm talking the truth. Not because I'm up here preaching, but because he had to look to him himself. See, until you have a personal, intimate experience with Jesus, you don't know who I'm talking about. I'm grateful that God has put a family around me that loves me. Galilee, y'all are fantastic. I love y'all. I've known you for over 30 some odd years, and you know me. And our love just keeps getting hotter and bigger every day. Thank you for your post. Thank you for your gifts. Thank you for your texts. Thank you for your calls. Just thank you. God is good. And we at Galley Missionary Baptist Church are going to lift him up. Lift him up as he takes us higher. Oh, I encourage you. You don't have a church home? Get on Facebook. Get in our messenger, and you will be a member of Galilee Missionary Baptist Church. We will take you in. If you're not baptized, when we come over, you'll be baptized. 
If it's on the Christian experience, we'll take you in now. We believe God does the increase. Not us, but him. And we are trusting him. To equip us for his increase. God bless you. Thank you all once again for joining with me on this celebrated day, February the 28th. God bless you. And all right, Trey and Darnell, take me on in. Lord bless you and keep you. Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Let every heart say. Amen. God bless you and meet me at Galilee. Love you all. Because y'all already know in whom your redeemer is. All I tell you 